up guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, HB. It is officially the new season. You feel the pressure, and your horse is cool. You come back high call, and your horse is calm. You win the roping because your horse was collected. Organically grown, lab tested, and made in America, Calm CBD products are dedicated to keeping your equine companion consistent and composed every time you back into the box. Try Calm CBD today and keep your horse cool calm and collected. Visit calmcbd.com to learn more. I'm so excited because today's going to be the first video back for the new season and I'm going to be talking to you all about Moonshine's journey up until now, how we ended up getting to the point to where she is now pregnant and we're going to have a baby. It's my baby. Is it my grandchild or is it my child? Because Moonshine's like my child. That is my mom's great grand pony. That's weird. Okay. I want to give you guys a full life update as to like what my life has been looking like lately, but um, that's what my podcast is for. So go listen to my new podcast on The Unbridled podcast. I basically just give a whole spiel about what the heck my life has been looking like lately. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos like this, more sit down videos, but of course the vlogs and stuff too. I haven't done very many sit downs, so I made this whole setup here. So cute. This is actually not my finalized idea. These are just the decorations that I want in my office in general. All right, but with all that said, let's get into the video and let's get into Moonshine's journey. I wish I had some coffee right now. I feel like I don't necessarily need it though. So for those of you guys that don't know who Moonshine is, she is my heart horse. She's the OG. She is somebody, somebody. See, I actually view her as a human. I've had her since she was four years old. She is 12 now. Her and I have been through so much together. I swear she is a horse that saved me. I know that sounds so cliche, but there was a point in my life not too long ago where I was really down in the dumps, for lack of better terms, and I didn't really know what I wanted with my life if it looked like rodeo anymore and there was a big period of time that I actually didn't ride it was just a stage I feel like everybody has in life where you just aren't really sure exactly what you want and nine out of ten times you always go back to where you came from it's just crazy to think for me because Moonshine truly has seen absolutely everything and I have so many videos of her of her and I going down the road of her and I barrel racing just absolutely everything so after you guys are done watching this video definitely go check those ones out all right so that's a little history about Moonshine I don't even think I really talked about her history but she's just been through absolutely everything with me <laughs> but let me tell you one thing that's for sure is I always wanted a moonshine baby that was uh, without a doubt moonshine has a solid place on this property I of course would want a baby out of her someday because that would be really cool to be able to carry on the legacy but I did not really expect it to come this fast I was kind of thinking about pursuing a moonshine baby in 2018 ish that's when I got legacy to be a surrogate for moonshine when I traded legacy I got a free breeding as well super nice stud I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about him later in the video so I got a free breeding and I was like okay cool so in 2019 I tried to kind of scope out what it would look like for Legacy to be a surrogate for Moonshine. I did not have the money for that. Very quickly realized that. I thought, well, maybe I'll try to live cover Legacy. I thought, might as well try. Legacy did not want to have a baby. It got really expensive that summer, and I just decided that this isn't something that's meant to be, so I said, mm, never mind. Meanwhile, the same year that I was trying for maybe a Legacy baby, I was barrel racing on Moonshine. That's when we went to the WCBRA finals. We were also in SSBPA, so we were doing two associations, probably like one um, barrel race every other weekend which to me right now which 2021 me is so jealous looking back at that whole season because it was such a dream it was so awesome to be able to travel with Keegan so anyways yeah in 2019 Moonshine and I were barrel racing and we were living our best life that was really the first season I will fully the first season that I had ever raced Moonshine and went hard and I was on top of the world and of course just you know with everybody else 2020 hits and for me, before COVID even started, Moonshine felt weird. I made videos about this, so if you guys want to go into more detail about everything that was going on, you can watch those. But it was kind of a time where I was really confused, really lost about what to do with just my entire career with Moonshine. She didn't want to run barrels. She was just 
she had this weird ear thing going on so we went to the chiropractor multiple times we went to the vet multiple times times like 3,000 and she cleared my pockets and still the vets could not find anything and actually still to this day they have not been able to find anything that's wrong with her something that I hear very often and it's so true is that I know moonshine better than anybody else I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of hours with her so if they are acting weird they're acting different they're acting sick if they're acting her then you would probably know and especially me with my horses I study them I absolutely knew that something was up with her and so I actually gave her the majority of 2020 off so in the beginning of 2021 I was thinking you know like what am I gonna do am I gonna barrel race am I gonna break away I gotta figure something else out it had just so happened divine intervention that I was working with legacy so I was talking to the stud owner and he was talking to me about how you know I still have that breeding if we still want to use it and so I really really started contemplating the thought of maybe I could breed moonshine which has never been a thought that crossed my mind really it was just always the idea of surrogacy because I love riding moonshine and I want to ride her all the time whether we're down the road barrel racing or not so I don't know like mentally I just decided like my entire life moonshine will never actually have a baby I'll just have a bunch of surrogates for her it wasn't until this year that I thought about the concept that Moonshine herself could probably be the one that's having a baby. So I brought it up to my vet and she's like, how old is she? And I said, 12. And she said, well, if there's any year that you wanna do it, it probably is now. Because apparently if a horse has not had a baby in the past, the cutoff year for like really big risks is 13-ish. I'm not a vet. So as you guys obviously know, I decided to go with it. So we went on with AI. We were a little bit too late, then we were a little bit too early. So it just so happened that she was going to be perfect and ready to go when I was in Arizona. This was when I was going to go visit Katie and I was gonna be gone for like five days so luckily for me the vet around here is so awesome and I was able to keep her there for the entire duration that I was actually gone we were actually on top of the hill at the trail ride when my mom called me and said hey the vet just called and said that moonshine was able to actually get bred and everything looks good looks like she took and you're probably gonna be able to pick her up as soon as you get back and I was like crying because again at this point I don't know if she's actually pregnant I just knew that there is now potential for a baby and so if you guys don't know it takes another two weeks after picking her up and bringing her home and just staring at her all the time to then bring her back and to see hopefully if she was pregnant again this two week period was the most dreadful thing ever. So also on a side note, something that really was kind of weird about the whole situation is that in the beginning of April, it was like mid-May, I started seeing the number 1111111, like just everywhere. And I was like, what is this? Like to the point where I'm looking it up, I've never been a person about numbers or angel signs or anything like that. And you know, looking it up, it was basically like, whatever you're manifesting, keep it going. It's kind of just a sign that you're in a good spot. You like, you need to keep going with whatever energy and potential that you have you know there's a lot of different meanings behind it but for me it just kind of felt like my life was manifesting in the correct direction that it needs to go in and so like I said I saw 11 11 1 1 1 everywhere all the time and then moonshine got pregnant and then moonshine was inseminated and then we had to wait two weeks and then cue now the day of her appointment and we're sitting there in the driveway and this may not sound crazy to anybody for me it just like everything just makes sense we're sitting there in the driveway I have moonshine next to me I'm not just like not freaking out I'm literally shaking I am absolutely freaking out because this is the day that I figure out if she's actually pregnant or not like this is a really big deal and I go to pick up my phone and I look at it and it says 11 11 at that moment I basically knew I knew absolutely without a doubt that she was pregnant Still walking in there I still like felt nervous and the vet actually took kind of a little bit to let me know if she actually took but when she said that she did take I was just like Okay, I'm just gonna play the clip. In it, you can hear in the beginning, the vet like very quietly says, oh, hey, she took. And then you can hear me say, what? What? Granted, I was crying, freaking out still, shaking. I was just absolutely beside myself. And so yeah, that was the day that I found out that she actually got pregnant. Still, when that's the case, you have another 28 day appointment, then you have a 40 day appointment, and then a 60 day appointment as well. Which a 60 day was more optional, but it was the one where I can kind of find out the gender. And so I kind of wanted to just 
try. It's not a hundred percent chance that you're gonna be able to see the gender because the baby has to be in the right position for the vet to be able to see it. So we were able to see a little bit. The vet did say that the baby was very wild and did not want to stop moving, which hearing that is just such a weird concept to me. We did end up getting a little bit of a confirmation as to what the gender is gonna be. Kind of already have a name for it, not gonna lie. And so it's a 75% chance that Moonshine's baby is a little girl. It's gonna be a girl, hopefully, maybe, 75% chance, we'll see. Sometimes things can grow a little bit differently, so the vet said it's not a full 100% chance, but it definitely looks like she's a girl. Everything I feel like I have envisioned is just totally coming together, and it just feels so good. So we're like seven-ish months away, which is really not bad, but I'm kind of just putting it to the back of my head right now. It's very weird for me to think that I have to go through Christmas before I'm able to even see this new baby, even the new year, even Valentine's Day. And what's actually really crazy is mine and Keegan's anniversary is March 20th as well and we're gonna be dating for five years at that point. All right guys, so now you know, if you didn't already, that Moonshine is pregnant. It's probably gonna be a girl. I was gonna tell you guys a little bit about the stud too because he's a really cool horse. His name is Sly Cooper. He's an own son of Highbrow Cat, actually. And for those of you guys that don't know, Moonshine is a Doc Coyote horse, so she's full cutting. Highbrow Cat is obviously full cutting. So this is gonna be a major cutting baby. This stud, Sly, has a son who's about 10 years old now, and he is like dominating the barrel horse industry right now. They broke five arenas records last year he's owned by Casey Mathis also the stud is owned by Jason Diaz I feel like I should definitely shout those people out because they deserve full credit for these horses they're absolutely amazing athletes it's freaking crazy so Casey has a son of Sly who's also named Sly and he's a gelding he won the WCBRA finals last year he ran a 69 on a standard pattern he broke five arena records, has like lifetime earnings of $75,000. Breakaways for this girl, by the way, Casey is like 18, 19, very young, is just now pro rodeoing on him and is placing at the pro rodeos. Like this horse is dominating. It is so awesome to see. And of course, now that I have a half sibling to it, I'm obsessed. Even a lot of people that are making a ton of money in the cutting as well. Like, just awesome. Also, if you guys want to get a breeding to this horse, you absolutely can. Just contact this guy. Let him know you're interested. Let him know that I sent you. Like, let's have some half moonshine baby siblings together. Anyways, guys, so I think that's going to be the end of this video. I'm so excited. It's finally going to be up, and we're finally in the groove. If you guys want to think of any names, please do so. Comment them down below. Let's get some baby names going. I have a really strong feeling what I'm gonna name her as far as her barn name goes, but for her registered name, I'm still not 100% sure. It's Sly Cooper and Coyote Q. That's Moonshine's registered name, so I'm not really sure exactly what to do. I kind of want to play with Coyote because it sounds like Coyote. I like the Sly thing, like Sly Coyote, like Sly Coyote, or you know, something like that. I don't know. You guys let me know what you want. I feel good though. I'm happy to be here and I love you guys. Okay. All right. I love you guys so much. If you guys want to go follow me throughout the week, go follow me on Instagram. It's at Hannah Beth Virginia, of course. Also for a more longer scale of me talking, you can go listen to my podcast. That's the Unbridled Podcast. Also, I just released a podcast with Kitty Blue, who's my girl. She and I are hosting a podcast together called Call Me Cowboy, and we are getting into some talks. So you guys should definitely stay tuned for that. I love you so much. Okay, I'm sorry for being annoying, but I do love you. And I will see you next week.